Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that do not know me, for those of you that are new, welcome. My name is Mara. Thank you so much for stopping by. We like to grow hair here on this channel, so definitely make sure that you subscribe. So for today's video, it's going to be an updated how I grew my hair. Um, in the four years that I've been natural now, you guys know that I've been natural since September 2016. So natural four years since I've been chopped. But real quick, this is my hair. So since the last video that I put up on my channel, not really a lot has changed from what I've been doing to my hair. Um, yes, my hair has gotten longer, but my routine and everything, it pretty much still remained the same. So if you hear some of the same tips from the last video, like I said, not really much has changed um so i have my list here in my notes and we're gonna try to make this video as quick as possible because like i said not a lot has changed and yeah let's get right into it so for those of you that are new to my channel here is a little bit of a backstory about me um i big chopped my hair in 2016 september 4th or 6th of 2016 I knew it was the day before I started my semester in college and then after I big chopped a week later I straightened my hair my hair literally was like up here straight okay curly it was like up here and straight it was right here so that happens literally a week after I big chopped because I didn't like how short my November 2017 I straightened my hair again then it was at shoulder length May of 2018 I straightened my hair and it was at armpit length so it literally went from here to shoulder strap to armpit um, and then 2019 you guys know that I like to do some periods of time where I don't straighten my hair I don't use heat so I wanted to do all of 2019 where I didn't use any heat on my hair, which I almost made it, except for one month, okay? So we went 11 months without any heat. Um, so November 2019, that was the first time that I straightened my hair that year, and my hair was at waist length. Um, and now December 2020 or January 2021, we are now at hip length or below hip length. I don't know. It's touching my butt crack. That's I don't know, okay? So like I said, that's pretty much the backstory from like the time that I big chopped in 2016 up into now with my hair straight. Um, that's like the gradual length increments, I guess you can say over the years. Um, what you guys have been waiting for and this is it. Um, what have I been doing this quarantine to my hair? Literally, I haven't done much to my hair this quarantine i'm so honest with you guys i have not been doing a lot of wash and goes i've been doing a lot of protective styles i consider my buns to be protective styles like the low buns the low ponytails those are like my protective styles because i wear those for weeks i refresh them after one week and then i go another week and my camera's about to wow okay so like i said before my camera dies on me i haven't really done much to my hair literally i've been doing protective styles again my protective styles do consider anything that does not require a lot of maintenance to my hair i do consider my buns and my sleek ponytails to be protective styles because once i put them in once i do it and i situate it i gel it down that's it the only time I really go back and refresh my hair is probably a few days later where I add more gel and I slick it down again and I got another weak hairstyle out of it. So that's why I consider those my protective styles because those are low maintenance hairstyles and I'm not manipulating my hair too much. Aside from my buns and my ponytails, I've also tried finger coils and I honestly haven't done those a lot, probably a handful, probably two or three times which you guys have seen one of the times that I did it and then I did a ponytail version of it. I honestly have not done a lot of wash and goes, probably three or four wash and goes this entire quarantine period, which was what, nine months so far, 10 months. And then I straightened my hair twice. So the first tip that I have for you guys, it was in my last video as well, but the first tip that I have, because this is the first thing I've noticed after I straightened my hair this time was trimming your hair so i'm pointing this out first because when i straighten my hair this time i normally notice when my hair has grew out of its trim and this time it didn't look like how do i explain this it didn't look like my hair grew much out of its trim which is good it's just letting me know that my hair is growing 
at the same pace. I used to notice this a lot when my hair was relaxed and I used to get trimmed by my mom. When she would cut my hair in the blunt cut, you can obviously tell if your hair is cut in a blunt cut that when your hair grows out, it'll start to look uneven. Or if you have certain parts of your hair that grows faster, you probably notice like a little length difference in between the two sides when you have it going to the back so real quick we are on my work break so i'm gonna make this as quick as possible i only have 15 minutes so let's power through and that lets me know that my hair is growing at different rates or different speeds if it's no longer like in that trim style or it could just possibly be that i got some real bad split ins that need to go okay So like I said, based off of my last video, trims is completely up to you. You don't have to get them every three to four weeks because if you're cutting your hair every three to four weeks, then technically you're not seeing any growth. And you probably won't see any growth if you're cutting it every three to four weeks. I don't recommend it, but it's up to your hair. It's not up to me. It's up to your hair and what your hair needs. For me, I trim my hair only when I straighten it. As of now, I don't need to trim my hair because like I said, my hair is still in that trim cut. Only you know when your hair needs to be trimmed if you have split ends if you have unevenness if you have like any type of damage just showing at the end then they gotta go do not listen to other people i don't listen to other people i don't follow these natural hair rules as to waiting four five six weeks to get a trim if you need a trim in those three four five weeks that doesn't mean that i need a trim so my next point obviously it's in the last video as well moisturization is key um, so if your hair isn't moisturized, then it's dry. I feel like if your hair is not dry, then it's moisturized. When I say that moisturization is key, if you're doing like a protective style, like if you're doing wash and goes, try to add moisture back into your hair. So after a few days when my wash and goes, it does get very dry after a few days, probably three or four days, it starts to get dry and I add oil or if I need to retouch my hair or do something to refresh it, I would add water and then probably some um, leave-in conditioner and then more gel on top just so that way if you're adding water back into your hair you're putting that moisture back into your hair to prevent it from breaking to prevent it from drying out and then initially causing more breakage because when your hair is dry you have more breakage like they just go hand in hand and I feel like when your hair is dry you also have split ends as well that increases the split ends and it makes your split ends worse because then if your hair is dry throughout the whole strand then your then your split end is just going to continue to split up your hair strand so you don't want that moisturize your hair okay um so <clears throat> i've also noticed from i've also noticed for me in the four years that i've been natural i believe i said this before um when my hair is dry it causes more tangles um so those little fairy knots or those little one strand knots whatever you want to call them they do come from dry hair so that's just something that you also have to consider as well in order for your hair health there's technically no way to get those single strand knots out unless you trim your hair so keep that in mind some other things that i've been consistently doing over the past years is that i've always slept with a silk satin pillowcase or a silk satin scarf i will link it down below where i got my silk satin scarf from i got it from amazon and i will link the one of the designs that they have i literally throw it over my pillowcase and i've been doing this probably for about three or four years since i've been natural because if you know cotton dries out your hair and that's just something that you don't want if you have natural hair when i went natural my hair was drier than ever before so that that was not a that was not a thing that i wanted to experiment with because it is a little bit rougher against your hair strands so that's definitely something that you need to consider silk satin or silk or satin um pillowcase scarf bonnet something just so that way you are protecting your hair and that is something that i said in my last video so i'm not going to go too much into it because i only got two minutes left okay like i said i haven't done a lot to my hair during this quarantine literally the styles that i told you beforehand those are the only styles that i've done i've only done a few wash and goes um like i said low manipulation it does cause less breakage it does cause less shedding it's because you don't constantly have your hands in your hair you're not constantly getting your hair wet you're not constantly tugging on it with a brush or anything like that so if you pull your hair back try to wear that style for at least a week if you can refresh it and go an extra few days then you can definitely do that because i do it and it works out fine but like i said keep your hands out of your hair it prevents breakage and it also helps retain length that way as well um another thing that i said in my last video and i know it's repetitive but literally like i said nothing has changed um using products that don't work 
I have a bunch of products in my stash that just did not work for me. I don't know if it was a combination. I do typically like to stick with branded products. So if I have, for example, this is the Rose Water Collection. Y'all know that I love this collection right here, but this is the Rose Water Collection. Um, so definitely just finding the correct or right products that is best for your hair. If it contributes to softness or or it helps you manage your hair, more, that's probably a product that you would want to keep in your collection. If the shampoo makes your hair dry and it makes it knotted and tangled and it feels like you just can't detangle your hair after you put that conditioner in that's probably a product that you would want to drop like i said that is pretty much based off of your hair and your experience when you wash your hair nobody can tell you what will work for you and what won't work for you it's just based off of your experience and you going through trial and error pretty much like i did because i went through a lot okay i went through a lot minimal heat I feel like I touch on the subject. I really can't remember though. Minimal heat. I'm not telling you guys not to use heat because clearly I straighten my hair. I used to straighten my hair a lot when I was relaxed. Probably every other three weeks I would straighten my hair. So I'm not going to tell you guys not to use heat. But when I say minimal heat, I mean blow dry your hair on one day and try to straighten your hair on another day. Just so that way you're not going back to back with the heat. And also what I do, I put my straightener now on the highest setting and I only have to do one pass. So I get my chi, I add all that in and then I only have to do one pass with my straightener. So that way, so that way when it's time for me to go and wrap my hair, I have that sleeky little sleek look. Um, but that's literally all that I need. That one pass could possibly work for you. Like I said, it just depends on you and your hair texture and your hair type and your hair thickness. If you have thicker hair, do smaller sections. I do smaller sections and I still get that sleeky look. So it's just completely up to your hair type and you also. Um, another thing that I don't believe is in that last video is your food intake, your diet, whatever you want to call it. I... I am not saying that I have the best diet. I'm not saying that I have the uh, the best eating habits. I can't say that I don't drink um, everything that I should. So when I say your diet, try to incorporate water into your diet. If you don't do so, try to incorporate foods that contribute to hair growth. Because if you do, then obviously, like I said, that encourages healthy hair. I drink sodas probably every day and but that's probably why my face has been breaking out a little bit more over the years as opposed to me just not having any breakouts okay so I've been experiencing a little bump here and there more often more frequently and I feel like it's because I drink sodas which obviously has sugar and that's not healthy for you to drink sodas so you probably want to monitor your food intake as well i'm going to tell you to stop drinking soda but just add a little bit more healthy food into your diet and that should contribute to healthy hair as well hey everyone so i definitely underestimated how long this video was going to be and i didn't think that i had this many tips um, but I did go ahead and make this into a two-parter, so definitely make sure that you stay tuned for the second half to this video to get all of the tips. Definitely make sure you subscribe to my channel and make sure you hit that bell button so that way you can be notified when part two comes up. I do hope you guys liked the first half to this video, and I will see you guys in the next half.